I'm Brianna. And I'm Akira. And you're watching Dante's, Dante's Boxing Nation. Nation. Brothers and sisters, I don't know what this world is coming to. Hey yo, check this out, this is Flavor Flav And if you want the whole truth, then nothing but the whole truth So help the whole truth Hey yo, you better listen to Don K, baby Don K! What's going on, guys, and welcome to another great edition of the Dante's Boxing Nation show. I am your host, Dante, and we have another great show for you guys, as always. First things first, let me go ahead and introduce the man on the ones and twos. DJ George is in the house. What's going on, George? Not too much. How you doing? All right, and I'm going to introduce my guys on the panel. Check out my man, Boxing Ego. Check out his website, BoxingEgo.com. And I got my man, Eric Morales. Check out his YouTube channel. Matter of fact, subscribe, and you guys can also go... In the description box, and you can subscribe to these guys if you're not already subscribed. That is Eric Morales at Counterpunch on YouTube. And I don't know if I got my girl, Miss Boxing Baby, on the show yet, but uh, she'll most likely be calling in if she hasn't already. Now, let me go ahead and introduce my very special guest inside the studio. This man right here is the former US, USBA welterweight champion of the world, my man Jesse Feliciano, and his trainer, Enrique Vila, or Villa. Welcome to the show, Jesse. Hey, what's up? Hey. Oh. How you doing? All right, man. I'm glad you guys can make it. We're going to talk a little bit about some boxing with you guys. Now, it's kind of interesting. I want to start the show off by just saying I just actually left the Zab Judah versus George. I'm so, I completely forgot his last name. But Zab Judah, I just left his press conference. They are starting a new series out here in Las Vegas at the D Hotel, the D Casino Hotel. And it's going to be um, fights monthly. Um, on, on CBS, I believe um, Al Bernstein, Kevin Kelly, they're going to be calling a fight. So it's a real big deal out there, out here in Vegas. So now let me go ahead and talk to you about this situation because, once again, it's a small world, Jesse. Now, right. now Zab Judah, he actually, his people, they actually offered you uh, to t a fight. They offered you to take right. this fight. Go ahead and talk about this. How come you guys didn't take that fight? Well, they wanted me to come down at 140. And you know, they couldn't meet it, uh, you know, catch weight or meet up at a certain weight. And I'm not all for that. Uh, I'm 147. And and it's it's, it's really unfortunate, man, because it would have so, real it would have really amplified, you know, this card. It would have been a really big card because it would have been awesome. Yeah, because <laughs> right now, because I know last time I put hands on Judah, I know he didn't forget. So. What's up? <laughs> hey, that's what it is. You said you sparred with him, right? Right. Yeah, Johnny Tocos, and uh, he didn't like it. He, he didn't like he, it. He didn't like it. So he was trying to get some revenge. You think when he tried to offer you this fight he, right here? He tried to get me at one forty so I could be weak. No, nah, uh, no, nah, I ain't. Nah, I ain't dumb. <laughs> yeah, and, and you and you guys see the little clip behind us. That was the press conference today. Uh, Zap Judah fighting against uh, George. Once again, I forgot his last name, but that is the clip right there. Website, www.lasvegasboxingacademy.com. And we're here. We strive to pro uh, provide a protective and encouraging environment and training and mentoring so we can take care of our youth. Okay? This is how we're going to do it, through boxing. Uh, my four pillars of excellence are discipline, duty, honor, and courage. I try to teach my children everything about what I have learned as a child. I started fighting since I was eight. I turned to boxing at 12, and I felt that everything was was well that there was no bullying nobody really messed with me because i was able to take defend care of yourself, yeah, huh? defend myself and that's all i want to teach these kids to do is defend themselves so that's what it is so if you guys want to check that out it is once again the las vegas Boxing Boxing Academy. Dot com. And it's coming soon because you guys don't have a venue yet, but no. everything is pretty much set in motion, though, right? Yes, it's we've already. Uh -huh. We're trying to do a fundraiser at the Boulevard Mall. We're also in negotiations to open our space there at the Boulevard Mall. Okay? These people are really happy to see that we're doing something for the community. Okay. That's what it is. 
Now, Jesse, um, I want to talk a lot for the people who don't know you or are not familiar with you. A lot right. of people, they should be. He was a big star on ESPN. I mean, it's you been fought, a while. you fought, but you fought a lot of big names. I want you to elaborate on it. I'll, I'll mention some of the names you fought against: Demetrius Hopkins, Alfonso Gomez from the Contender, a couple times, Vince Phillips, fa- undefeated at the time, Fast Freddie Kadena. Um, right. Talk, just go ahead and elaborate on this with guys you've been in the ring with. Uh, Coming Centron. Uh, I've been in the ring with the, quite a few people. It's just, you know, it's, I'm, I'm all for now. What, yeah. what's, what's, what's going on for now? Um, though um, Torrance, he's offering, uh, possibly working on a fight in uh, St. Martin in, in the Carib- Caribbean. Mm-hmm. So, um, see what happens. It may be a title fight. And you, you're going to be fighting at the welterweight division. You, you're comfortable there, right? Right, right. Yeah. I mean, how soon do you see things moving? Uh, you, you want a title shot at the end of the year, next year, or what? Um, if things are work smoothly and goes well, um, possibly next month. Possibly next month next you'll be – that's how fast you want to fight for a title already? Well, I, I've been at it since last year, so it's been a while. Yeah. Uh, I, you know, I'm, I'm, be, I'm being patient. But whatever shows up, whoever calls me, hey, we can work something now. I'm negotiable. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, anybody, anytime, any place at 147, baby. You've been in a lot of wars, Jesse. Um, how much um, thread is still on the tires, man? <laughs> well, that's why I've been out the game for six years. So, you know, you I think that helped the, the I rest? I think that helped a whole lot because, you know, getting hit so many times, you're going to take so much. Mm-hmm. But, uh I'm back rejuvenated. Yeah. So. Now, something interesting you told me before the show, I thought that was pretty informative. You said you actually sparred with Mayweather to get right. him ready for the Castillo rematch. Mm-hmm. Right. And you, you said that you was like the last man standing because you said Floyd was sending everybody home. Basically, I was the last man standing. The, uh, Dewey uh, Welliver from Washington, he had a broken wrist, but he, he stayed, of course, but he didn't get to spar with Mayweather at the end. I was the last one saying it. Mayweather was sending people home left and right. Broken noses, jaws, ribs. <laughs> people just quit from hungry and just went home because they couldn't handle Mayweather. Mayweather was top knit, top shape. He was just, I don't know, he was amazing. That's all I have to say about that. Wow. So he was really strong then at 135 then because that's right. where he was fighting at the time, right? Right, right. Wow, breaking uh, breaking nose, ribs, all that kind of stuff. A lot of people don't know that kind of stuff, and that says a lot about you. You was the last one. You was no the last injuries. of the Mohicans. Uh, no injuries, you know. I was the last uh, last vegan <laughs> <laughs> standing. So, you know, it, it was it was it's an awesome experience to go through. Um, I'm sure Mayweather hasn't forgotten about that. Yeah. So, wow. Interesting, man. Maybe so, uh, he can get me on a card sometime. Yeah, um, I mean. Oh, he's talking about coming back with Garcia. I don't know, man. What you think about that? Uh, I I think you better watch out, man, because I'm gonna come for you too. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, what you think about Danny Garcia though, as an opponent? Yeah, um, I think he he'd be a good opponent for him. Um, we just sit, we have to see. Um, you know, only time can tell. Mm-hmm. So Mayweather, he's a king, king of the division. Even though he's retired, he's coming back, so he's still the king. Yeah, so that, that's what it is, man. You can knock him all you want, but he's undefeated, baby. So that's money talks, bullshit walks. So, so what do you think about him now, overall? Your, from your experience to present day, I mean, how how good is he comparing him to like you know today and and you know greats and all? Um, he's the best, no doubt. Yeah, that's that's what he calls himself. So, so um. you know, he's money. He's money. He made the most money at it. No one's topped his 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 charts at all. So mm-hmm. he 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 broke the record. So yeah. I'm trying to do the same thing. You trying to do the same thing. Right. So how old are you now? I'm 33. You're 33. <laughs> right. So you still look like a baby compared to Floyd. That's, that's <laughs> Floyd, Floyd is like 30, 38 going on 39. You only 33. See, it's in my genes. <laughs> you know, I got it from mama. <laughs> yeah, there it is. There it is. Yep, so you're still young compared to the Hopkins and the Floyd, so that's that's a good thing. Okay, guys, so we, we're going to jump around and um, talk to my guys on the panel right now and, and like I said, come back to you guys. Um, I, I just want to talk briefly. Uh, let me see, is Miss Boxing Baby on the line? 
Okay, she's not on the line. Okay, let's start with you, Eric Morales. Uh, what do you think about this uh, very sad news, man? Keith Thurman, he pulls out of this fight. You know, up until today, this was pretty much the biggest fight, at least on free TV, Thurman versus Porter. You know, they said he got into a car accident. But have you got any additional details or information on this car accident and, and how severe the injury is or, or what part of his body was injured or anything like that, Eric? No, no. Unfortunately, I know as much as you do. Uh, four to six weeks is what DeBella was saying the injury will go. Apparently, after the accident, he tried to spar. It apparently locked up on him, his shoulders and his neck, that being locked up on him. And he just wasn't able to continue. That's actually a question we probably want to ask Jesse Feliciano to see how much that would affect the fighter going in there with his neck being sore and his shoulders locking up, uh, how much that would hurt him. So four to six weeks later, we may see the fight again. Hopefully we do. Uh, I'm not too sure. I think they're going to say Abner Mars and Fernando Montiel is going to go ahead and main, uh, do the main event now. But I'm not sure what they're going to do with that card now that Keith Thurman's out. Yeah, and, and, and boxing ego, man. Well, what do you think about <laughs> – you know, you, you, you already know Kenny Porter going to say something. Kenny Porter, he's saying, I don't believe it until I see proof. I mean, wh what do you think about that? Do you, do you think um, – do you attribute any of this to Keith Thurman just not being ready, or is this just an injury? Well, I mean, it's all, it's all speculation, so I'm not going to sit up here and call the man a liar and say he didn't get in a car accident. But yeah. a lot of fans are doing it, obviously. I hate to admit it. I thought the same thing when I heard the reports. I hate to admit it, but I initially thought, uh oh, what's going on in training camp? Sorry to interrupt, Rico. Oh. No, it's good you said that though. <laughs> no, so good. so we know that some people do, you know, think that, you know. But uh go ahead, Ego. Yeah, I mean it's it's naturally something that, that people are gonna instantly think, you know what I mean, anytime it's a high profile fight. And the other thing, I just feel bad for the porters because throughout this whole ordeal, like the fight was supposed to be made in December of last year and all this, it sounded like the porters were always on board and you know what I mean? They were willing. They were doing several interviews, say, hey, we did our part, our signed our part. We're just going to stay patient, stay patient. So throughout this whole process of just negotiating everything, I think the Porters have been pretty uh, patient with the whole process of making it. Then just to be in, in training camp and feel like you have something to prove and you can't wait to get the fight on, something unfortunate happens, and then now you don't even know if you're going to face them. Mm -hmm. Like, I mean, who knows? We've seen plenty of fights. Devin Alexander – for those of you guys who haven't been watching boxing that long, he was supposed to fight Kell Brook three times, mm. and each time it got um, like postponed because of injuries. And that fight, we still never seen it. Yeah, to this day. And Tyson Fury so never versus Hay. Pull out. Sometimes they just never happen. Yeah, yeah. Like like I said, Tyson Fury versus Hay. You had a couple fights like that. Oh yeah, I was pissed at that one too. Remember, Yuri uh, Yorker's Gamboa was supposed to fight Brandon Rios way back when too. Oh yeah, had a press conference, everything, and Gamboa didn't show up. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that was a crazy I, I one. Was, I think we're going to see the fight. I, really, I mean, you know, unfortunately, it uh -oh. happened boxing, but I think people are going to see it. Yeah, and people are going to wait for it. I, I, I mean, I don't see anything with him. A lot of people saying, you know, maybe he duck and pull. I don't see that happening because, in my mind, in my opinion, he's going to beat him easy. So I, I just, I just think that he got into a car accident. It happened. Yeah. Human, so and eventually you're gonna see the fight. You have to make the fight. And that, to. Yeah, and that's that's Miss Boxing Baby. Welcome to the show, by the way. <laughs> yeah, I, I don't want to. <laughs> I, I don't want to believe that. I, I really don't want to believe that Keith Thurman, you know, it wasn't ready or or whatever. You know, I, I want to believe that this is just an injury, and you know, it is what it is. It's, right. it's something that that <laughs> Keith Thurman couldn't control. You know, it was something you know out of his control, basically. So I'm, I'm hoping that that is exactly what it is, but it's just so unfortunate because once again, the that was out. yeah, that was like like me and Jesse were talking about earlier. That was like the biggest fight this year, especially on free TV, and now we gotta wait for it. But there's so many other fights, though, you know, especially in the month of March. Hey, so I will say this to add real quick. I, I mean, I'm not even trying to hate, but the the fight. The only good thing, the only good thing is if it does get rescheduled, hopefully they reschedule it somewhere else other than Connecticut, like yeah. Vegas, California, yeah. you know what I mean, like a bigger venue. Do it all the way live to me. Because I never understood why it was happening at where it was happening anyway. The Mohegan Sun, other than the UFC card, was happening the week before. But hopefully they reschedule it for Vegas or somewhere last year, in my opinion. Yeah, excellent point. So, yeah, man, Keith Thurman, he pulls out. He got into a car accident. What do you think about that news, man? And what did you think about that fight? Well, Keith Thurman is a good fighter. He's basically, he's tough. 
He's a great opponent. But I don't know. Everybody doesn't want to lose, right? And I don't think it's that bad to lose, really. It teaches you. It gives you character. And it shows you that, hey, so sometimes you, you can lose. So you, so you think he pulled out on purpose? Well, pretty Keep much he, he did. He felt that maybe he just couldn't. Mm -hmm. it, you know, and and he's a tough guy. Yeah, and you can't say anything bad really about him, but but for how you started off, like you pretty mm -hmm. much attributed yeah. to <laughs> Keith not really being right. ready, possibly for for uh, Porter. Yeah, but that's right. To Porter. his credit, he did get in an accident. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Let's see. If, yeah. All we can say is, and I, and and I want to make it clear, I'm mm -hmm. not I'm not saying that mm -hmm. you know. Keith was, you know, afraid or not ready. Mm -hmm. But Sean Porter's dad feels that way. Kenny Porter, he just recently said, he said, I got to see the proof, you know, because Kenny believes that because it took so long for for Keith Thurman, for whatever reason, to sign the contract, they don't believe it, you know. But an accident is an accident, you know. Right. I mean, right. I'm not going to. I'm not going to say Keith is lying, you know, no. because we don't know what's going on. No, we no. don't know how, how hurt Keith Thurman is. Mm -hmm. But, Jesse, who will win a fight like that, Thurman versus Porter? Um, I was going for Thurman. So uh, it's unfortunate that this had to happen because I was so looking forward to watching this fight. Some, you know, yeah, it was a big fight, right? Big time fight. The yes. biggest fight on free TV. Yes, yeah. yes it was. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. So, Speaking speaking of free TV, since you brought that up, Jesse, what do you think about this um, this Al Heyman PBC uh, movement? There's been tons of fights on free TV, like back to back to back. Every week, it's like you see, we're seeing a different fight. Matter of fact, this weekend we have um, uh, Scott Quigg against Carl Frampton, another um, PBC fight. What do you think about the um, Premier Boxing Champions? I think you know it's it's I think it's awesome because they they bring it they brought it back, like back in the old days they used to have free TV all the time. And yeah, everybody's wondering well what happened. Mm -hmm. Now we have to pay for it. Yeah, <laughs> hold up. <laughs> yeah, now we have to pay for almost everything, or at least and, pay for a subscription on right. HBO or Showtime. Right. So yeah. it's a good thing, you know, you get the people back into boxing. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. The more the more. Uh, the more viewers, the more the more everybody gets paid. Uh -huh. and, and since you're in the welterweight division, Jesse, let's talk about the welterweight division. You have fighters like Errol Spence, right. Chris Algieri. He's he's fighting against Chris Algieri. He is. You got Sean Porter, Keith Thurman. Now mm -hmm. that Floyd is gone, who would you say is the top dog at the welterweight division? Pacquiao. Pacquiao? Brett really? Pacquiao. Yeah. Interesting. Interesting. Right. Why do you say Pacquiao is the best at 147? Because, for one, he's ranked – the best since Mayweather's dropped out, um, and he deserved that spot. So would you? So you would pick him over fighters like Errol Spence, Keith Thurman, Sean right. Porter until they Kel face, Brook until they face him in person or uh, live in the in the bout. Yes, I pick him over anyone. That is a bold statement, Jesse. <laughs> That's a bold statement right there. Right. What, what what you think about that, Enrique? Well, I think there's uh, one better fighter. Who's that, that? And that's Jesse Arroyo Feliciano, which is sitting right next to me. Boy, y'all selling right. it. That's right. Boy, y'all so, selling it. You heard it, Pacquiao. Jesse right. coming for you. Yeah, Boy, watching, see, see y'all yeah, yeah, starting some mess now. We'll nah. take all <laughs> comers. <laughs> all comers. Just give me a call. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Hit me I'm, up. I'm keeping Jesse focused. He's now into Tai Chi. We're focused as people and fighters and then that's how you have to be in this business if you lose focus you're going to get hurt if you keep it cool keep it great strength and conditioning there's nobody to beat you. Yeah, skills too you skills have skills, and skills of course and also yeah. jesse's learning more defense now than anything remember he was a brawler you you, okay. you took my question there you go he because was a brawler because um, obviously, I'm sure you learned out of, throughout all those wars, you're going to have to have a great defense to, right. you know, really advance in the sport, right? Right, right. It's, you know, His skills it's are inev coming. Inevitable. So. Yes. Uh -huh. <laughs> His age, he's 33. He blows to the head, aren't very good anymore. Let's do something better. Let's teach these people to come in. And they're the ones that are going to get hurt. And um, let's go ahead and talk about the fights this um going on this weekend, guys. 
So we we got Terrence Crawford against Hank Lundy. I know this is going to be very difficult for you guys to make predictions, but <laughs> we got to do it, right? So, <laughs> yeah, let, let, let's start with you, uh, Miss Boxing Baby. Who's going to win this fight? How's it going to play out? Crawford versus Lundy. I'm, I'm sorry, which fight are you talking about? Crawford. Terrence Crawford versus Hank Lundy. Stop it. Late, <laughs> uh-huh. Maybe, maybe um, I don't know how late. Cause, see, the thing is, Hank can box. But he always has that Philly fighter mentality. You know, it, come, it comes out and usually after like the fourth round or so, he's going in there, going for broke. He doesn't have the best chin. So I'm going to say maybe like 9 or 10. Wouldn't be surprised if it was earlier, though. Yeah. For Crawford. Okay. And, and I laugh because I, I thought you said stop it, but you, you said stop it is what you were saying, right? Oh, no, no. Stop it, yeah. Oh, okay. So I, yeah. I thought you said stop yeah. it. Why are you even asking me that? But anyway. <laughs> Yeah. yeah, that too, though. Yeah, that too. That too, right? That's that's that what Jesse said. Yes. I agree with her. Yeah. <laughs> Jesse said Hank Lundy I mean, doesn't no, really no, have a no chance. Don't disrespect to Hank. I'm not disrespecting him at all. Yeah, it's yeah. Just that it is what it is, you know? Nine, yeah. Ninth or tenth round. No disrespect. Man. Yeah, ninth or tenth. So, you see ninth or tenth round? Yeah, I agree with that statement, though. Yeah. Yeah, no, ninth dis- or tenth. No disrespect. But, but not surprised if it goes a little earlier because, yeah. you know, Crawford, he's, he's a monster, man. He's, he's very good. He's a different type of monster. Different type of monster. He's and hungry. Different, different type. And, 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 yeah, and, and Ego, um, like we was talking about on you know previous shows, Bob Arum, he still wants to make that Pacquiao versus Crawford fight. So, you know, um, this obviously, you know, everyone's assuming that Crawford's going to get past Hank Lundy. But um, once again, I want to ask you the question. I don't know if I asked you before, Ego, but do you think Pacquiao will stand, will stick around after the Bradley fight? Do you think he'll stick around and possibly fight against uh, McCrawford? You know what? To, to truthfully answer that question, I mean, just first of all, my prediction, I'm picking Terrence Crawford. I've seen the boy live, moves like water. And, he, you know, <laughs> he's just versatile. And I'm going with what's more, a little bit more proven um, at the elite level. Hank Lundy. You know what I mean? Put up the best fight you can and, and whatnot. But to, truth be told, as far as a lot of people ask, someone asked me on my channel about Pacquiao Crawford, I really think I'm not really worried about Crawford getting past Lundy. I'm more worried about Pacquiao getting past Bradley. Bradley, and yeah, yeah. Not just getting past Bradley, getting past him impressively. Because I'm going to tell you, from my perspective, if Pacquiao doesn't clearly convince you, it can't be a Pacquiao versus Marquez three type of win. You know what I mean? Because I thought Marquez won that fight. I didn't think Pacquiao won the third fight. You mm-hmm. know what I mean? Mm-hmm. It can't be like the Pacquiao versus Bradley won fight where there's different opinions. Like you said, he won. Uh, Bradley won. I think Pacquiao won. But either way, it wasn't his best performance. So if he goes in there with Bradley, he has to like clearly and convincingly win. No Canelo, Laura, where it's up in the air, who really won. He has to clearly win because I, I truthfully don't want to see Crawford versus Pacquiao if he doesn't convincingly beat Bradley if for a third time. Yeah, that, that'll that just um, end up making uh, Crawford a, a heavy favorite probably in that fight. Jesse, what, what do you think about – I didn't ask you about that, Pacquiao versus Bradley. Do you think that's a foregone conclusion or um, – You know what? Uh, <clears throat> Bradley has uh, Teddy Atlas in his corner. So, hey, there might be a, a, you know upset here. Yeah. So you, I don't know. I don't know. We have to see. You know, time to tell. But uh, I, I want Pacquiao to win because you know that's where all the money is. But yeah, yeah. But you could see a possible upset in right. the making. Teddy Atlas. Hey, Teddy Atlas was with Mike Tyson. Teddy Atlas has been in the game for a while. Long time. Mm-hmm. You know he knows what he's saying. He knows mm-hmm. what he's doing. So. Mm-hmm. What about you, Enrique? Bradley versus Pacquiao three or Pacquiao Bradley three? Well. Pacquiao needs to watch out because it's it's difficult when see we teach old school I teach old school so does my partner here Tony we all teach so does Teddy Atlas we need to understand boxing is fundamentals if you cannot handle the fundamentals you're going to lose every fight simple fundamentals will win you the fight so saving that the fundamentals would be on Teddy Atlas's corner. He's teaching mm. very good fundamentals, very good movement, everything like that. More strength, more conditioning. Interesting. We we it sounds like we have a panel right now that's this slightly because I'm actually picking Bradley 
you know, if, if I'm forced to pick, I'm picking Bradley to, to pull off the upset. Right. And you guys sound like you're slightly leaning in that direction. Um, I think Fox and Eagle, I think you even said something similar to that as well. So it, it, it'll be interesting. It'll be really interesting to see how this fight plays out. Like I said before, Tim Bradley, he doesn't get a lot of credit for that first fight, but Tim Bradley did very well in the first fight. You know, because of the backlash, people said it was a robbery. People don't even really pay attention to the fight anymore. You know, but you look at the first three rounds, you look at the last three rounds. I tell people this all the time. You, it would be, you, it would be kind of hard for you to just say Manny Pacquiao just won those rounds because the first three rounds, Pacquiao he waited to like the last minute to throw like one or two left hands in the first three rounds, mm. and it was Bradley that was throwing all the punches. And then in the last three rounds, it was the same thing. Bradley was was hobbling around the ring on two messed up ankles, but he was the one that was punching, and and Pacquiao looked like he was gas, you know. So yeah, and, and so I'm thinking if you have a healthy Tim Bradley. He has the momentum of knocking out Brandon Rios, who had never been knocked out before. And now he's with Teddy Atlas. And now they're looking like, you know, Creed and, and you know, and Balboa. Yeah. You know what I mean? So <laughs> they got some momentum going on right now, you know. So let's uh, – hey, I, I was just about to say oh, that, John. I had, I, had him, um, I had Pacquiao kind of winning that first race kind of clearly. That's why I was a little confused as to why there was a second one, but – you know, because he to me it was a robbery. I, I didn't I didn't have Bradley winning that many rounds. Hate to say it, I, I agree with boxing, baby. I thought I, it was a pretty easy. <laughs> well, you, you, you hate to it. say it. <laughs> uh, yeah, because it just seems like the panel was pretty convinced that Bradley won that first no, fight, and I'm like, I'm not convinced at all. What? I, well, I went to the casino and I bet money towards uh, yeah, the first I mean, fight, I think, and I, think I well, won the we first know who fight won, too, right? but I think he also yeah. looked great. I he didn't look great, but he still won it to me. Yeah, yeah. Bradley didn't hurt. I mean, honestly. The first fight, Bradley was given a lot of praise for Pacquiao's defense. So Pacquiao was blocking shots, and they kept saying, yeah. Bradley's hitting them all over. And it's like, that's actually called defense. Yeah, and, he never uh, really made him pay for anything that he, made, that he missed. Yeah, I can't. I can't. Well, in this next fight, in this third fight, I'm going to go against the green. I'm going with Pacquiao. I think he's going to beat him again. Actually, these no, gay comments that he just had, it could either be a detriment or it could be a fire. And we need to see which one it is. Yeah. Well, I mean, Dante, I think I currently think that uh, Bradley actually has a lot more momentum. I don't know who I'm going to pick at the moment, but Bradley definitely has more momentum. Diego Chavez, I thought Bradley won that fight. Oh because yeah, Bradley no doubt. Wolf. That's because of a headbutt, so that wasn't his fault. I thought he beat Chavez. He beat uh, Rio's first one to stop him. Pacquiao's coming off the Mayweather loss. He was losing the first six rounds to Bradley in the rematch easy. Before that, he fought Algieri. You know what I'm saying? A 140 pounder off a split decision. So I think Bradley clearly has the momentum, and Teddy Atlas will probably be able to keep him on a on a tighter leash because he's a new well, coach who still want to do good and, and impress him. Yeah. I think the big question is, was the Brad was the was the Brandon Reeves victory for Bradley fool's gold? Was that a genuine hardcore knockout or was Brandon Rios a little past his prime? And that's what we're going to find out when he fights back out. Well, I mean, well, well you first can't really but, say that because I was in Denver, I was in Denver live and watched Brandon Rios beat the shit out of Mike Alvarado. They're spitting on him and throwing beer bottles on him because he quit on the stool because he looked vicious with uppercuts. Mm -hmm. So his very next fight, he got stopped by Bradley. So let's, let's I mean, just say that Rios is not Pacquiao, so I can't even compare them to like I can't even well, use that. I can that agree with that. He's not Pacquiao. But he can't even use that as a crutch. He's not him. I, I, I mean, I, I can agree with that, yeah. but but at the same time, just oh. just from the aspect of momentum, you know, just the fact of, of knocking out yeah. Brandon Rios, and, and, and once again, no, I don't, I don't buy any Brandon Rios being past his prime. I totally agree with Boxing Ego. He looked sensational against Mike Alvarado, but he wasn't in the ring with yeah, Bradley that interview. night. You I know, an interview from after the Alvarado fight with Robert Garcia, and he said, "This is Brandon's back. He's back. He's back in the gym doing his thing." He had a little bit of an eight-month layoff, and then now people are saying he's past prime. You can't do that. You can't have it both ways. Garcia himself said Brandon's back. He's back disciplined, throwing uppercuts, and then his next fight he gets stopped. Yeah. So, you know what I'm saying? I think that, and I think the biggest thing for the Bradley stoppage was not that Bradley's the strongest guy. It's his game plan with Teddy Atlas. People were going – he was going to the breadbasket the whole fight. When you were watching the Alvarado-Rios fight, they were headhunting and – now, actually, ego. That's an interesting analogy. Let me let me tell you why. Uh, we I just mentioned that Brad, Brandon Rios might have been fool's gold, uh, or when Tim Bradley beat Brandon Rios, it might have been fool's gold. Now, when Brandon Rios beat Mike Alvarado, 
Mike Alderado was actually the guy who is past his prime and not with it. And so, like I said, it's just one of those things where you can't really take a devastating knockout from a guy who may not really be there because as much as uh, that Brandon Rios victory against Mike Alvarado was, a lot of people thought Mike Alvarado, Mike Alvarado should have even have been in that ring. Let, let, let me just well, say I mean, that's their, that's their fault. That is, that's not my fault if someone didn't train. At the end of the day, you signed up, you have a contract, you have like legal issues and get arrested and – different stuff like that. that. It is what it is. All I know is I watched Brandon Rios destroy Alvarado live yeah. with uppercut. With uppercut. Yeah, and, and it was a great fight. I, I'm just saying, we need to see what kind of what kind of victory that was against Brandon Rios. But I'm inter- I like the fight. I want to see it just as much as you do. Let- I definitely see the momentum for Tim Bradley, but I still go with Pacquiao by decision. Okay. Me too. And, 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 and let me- who wins, gay people or Pacquiao? <laughs> Uh, I think it's a right it's now. No, no, I don't know. <laughs> right now, Pacquiao's people are winning. Right now, they burning Nikes and all kind of stuff. Hey, you know, I was just telling them earlier. This is the first time I've ever seen someone get dropped from a, a, a major sponsorship, and the fans are actually supporting the guy that got dropped over the, the sponsorship. You know, the, you know, the sponsor companies like Nike, especially Nike, as big as they are. That is crazy, man. But let me just say this they real quick. They mad at the company. They mad at the corporation. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. They they like you. If you go against Manny Pacquiao, you got problems with us. I mean, that's just what it is. They 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 riding I see for why, Manny Pacquiao. I see why the fans were mad at me when I picked Mayweather to beat Pacquiao, even though I was right. Speaking of cheering, you, you, you my man Jesse Jesse Feliciano's dad is in the in the building right now. He <laughs> he had just you, you need to you need to speak on this. He All just right. sent a little cue card over here, and and, and, and um, he wrote down cheer for Bradley. So, so you got to explain yourself now. What do you mean? His microphone is off. He can share with him, share with him real quick. Yeah, share his microphone. There you go. Well, it looks like uh, there's going to be a lot of gay fans there going to see Pacquiao <laughs> lose. So they're going to make a lot of money. <laughs> so, so, so you believe what you're basically saying is you believe from the backlash that there's going to be a lot of people rooting against um, uh, Manny Pacquiao. Is what you're saying? Oh, correct. And they're going to be firing up Bradley. Oh wow, that's yeah. Well, you know what? Um, you know, like I was saying last week, that it, it could be a part of that, but it can also be that Manny Pacquiao can end up being up like Donald Trump. You know, because <laughs> we we seen when when Donald Trump when he spoke his mind and, and right. shocked everyone, he actually went up in the polls. So it might be a little mixture of everything. But that was um Jesse Feliciano's um dad that just uh spoke on that right there. So but well, let me say let me say one more thing about the Brandon Rios situation. When it comes to Brandon Rios, you know, people were talking about how, oh, you know, at the weigh in, you know, he looked sucked up and his eyes were all, you know, looked like a skeleton and so on and so forth. I, I wanna make I, I wanna tell everybody, uh, explain that Brandon Rios has always looked like that before a fight. He always looks sucked up. You know, he's never really came in looking like a bodybuilder. He's never really looked like he was all ripped up or shredded up or anything like that. So this is the regular Brandon Rios or the normal Brandon Rios that we always see. Just because he got knocked out with a body shot, you also have to understand that when you knock someone out with a body shot, you don't have to have a lot of power. You know, so Manny Pacquiao, um, Tim Bradley, he started off breaking down Brandon Rios from the first round on with body shots. He was using a lot of angles, and he caught Brandon Rios with a good body shot. And even Brandon Rios gave Bradley his props that that was a hell of a body shot. So I mean, I didn't see, you know, Brandon Rios didn't look any different in that fight. If you look at how Brandon Rios was attacking Tim Bradley with the aggression, he looked no different than he looked in any other fight. You know, because to me, I just think that's it's more of people taking away the credit from Tim Bradley you know, than um, than giving him the credit that he deserves. So You know, and that's a good point, Dante, and I do apologize. I didn't mean to take away credit for Tim Bradley. I was just, in, in comparison to Pacquiao, it was the only reason why I mentioned it. I thought it was a very good victory against Brandon Rios. I'm just, when we compare to uh, Pacquiao, it's a different story. Mm-hmm. Yeah, no, yeah. I, I I agree. it is what it is. I, 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 I agree Rios is not Pacquiao. I mean, that's, I don't think anyone I made agree. that comparison. But I think, like, look at Victor Postal versus Lucas Matisse. I really don't think Victor Postal was the hardest puncher Lucas Matisse has been in with when he fought guys like Ruslan and Danny Garcia. But it's, it's about the proper strategy and game plan. Victor Postel used his 
three inch height advantage. He's five ten or whatever. He used the Ukrainian boxing school, and he he broke down his person systematically. So you have to give points for the strategy and the game plan that pulled it off. Rios, if he if, if it was a Rios versus Diego Chavez rematch, he might not have got knocked out by Diego Chavez, even though he has more power than Bradley. Bradley mm-hmm. went to the bread basket where he made Brandon Rios pay, and a lot of people didn't do that consistently because no one wanted to have an inside fight with Brandon Rios. Yeah, that's my, a good my point. Question, my question is, can he really beat Pacquiao convincingly? That's the question. Not can he beat him or beat him just a little bit, maybe be questioned like the first fight, even though to me he lost clearly. It's can he beat him decisively? That's the question. Yeah. And I can't, still can't go off the Rios because that's not even I, – I just can't do that. And even though Pacquiao lost to Mayweather, Bradley's no Mayweather. And to right. beat Pacquiao, you either got to back him up or you got to box him. It, Morales, Mayweather, it, and Tim Bradley, I – I, I don't know. I just what does he have really to back him up with is my question now. Something else I want to say. Something else I, I want to no. say is let's not forget the shoulder injury. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> okay, uh, now now see now you're gonna jinx it and he's gonna have another injury if he loses this fight. You know, it's gonna be the it's gonna be the left shoulder. You know, so but but see, this is this is another thing I wanted to say. Tim Bradley, as far as I'm concerned, it looked to me like he studied that Mayweather versus Marquez fight, right? Like to do with Marquez when he was out boxing him. So, you know, I'm just wondering if, if that's going to wear off on him when it comes to uh, Manny Pacquiao. Now he got a chance to watch what Floyd Mayweather did to Tim Bradley. Yeah, I'm sorry. What Floyd Mayweather did to Manny Pacquiao, so I, you know, I just wonder if if that's going to you know help uh, Tim Bradley as well. But then again, at the same time, Tim Bradley he's a lot shorter. He doesn't have those same long arms that Mayweather has. So you know, he it would be a little bit of a, a different style, you know, when it comes to him fighting against Manny Pacquiao. But still, I, I you know I can't help but to think that you know him watching Mayweather beat Manny Pacquiao. You know, it, it's giving him a little bit more confidence. And on top of that, once again, with Teddy Atlas and, and coming off of um, an impressive win. So, That's a good thought. Let's not and forget, the, the will the judges me. hold a grudge? Remember in the first fight with Tim Bradley, he waited like, I don't know, an extra two hours to finish off like a, a finals game and maybe a movie. And then he decided to go into the ring. And a lot of people thought that was his reason for why he lost that decision. So will these comments he made influences the judge's decision to go against him? I thought, I know someone brought that up, but I totally forgot that that actually happened in the first fight too. The, 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 that right there, I didn't really know too much about right there. So, but the thing um, I was the thing I was gonna say is like I'm not like I'm not like HBO. They're trying to pitch it like Bradley's new and improved. Bradley's always been a good fighter, and it's too early to tell from the Rio's performance only how improved he is. But the thing is, I'm also looking in like where's Pacquiao's head at? Shoulder injury, coming off the Mayweather loss, getting into politics. The, the backlash from the gay thing, and then also uh, you look at Bradley in the second fight. I don't know. I had him easily winning the first five six rounds easily, mm-hmm. and then he just like blew his wad and, and gassed out or whatever. And then Pacquiao made the adjustments. But I, I think Bradley has it in him to beat him. He just has to be more. Just, he has to have a he can't fight with a chip on his shoulder. He has to fight smart. Yeah, and and and, be- and, and that's the thing. At times he tends not to fight smart. He did win the Chavez fight, but it was his fault that they called it a draw. Because of what he did. He always does that. Turns everything into a war. Against a guy like that, there's no need to do that. So yeah. my question is, how is he going to fight him? Is he going to convincingly really, really, really beat Pacquiao? And I just don't see it. Yeah. I, and, you know, not saying it can't happen. I just don't see it happening. And I just want to say for the record, eventually, one of these days, we're going to play that first fight. You know, we're going to play that first fight. And, and my whole thing is not to try to convince anyone who won but just basically showing people how close the fight was. You know, so, I mean, I don't even have a problem with people saying that Pacquiao won the first fight, but I would like to play the fight so we could just see how close the actual fight was because, to to me, that fight was extremely close. And not only to me, but even the referee, Bird, who afterwards, and and he has, you know, he's not leaning towards anyone, you know, he's not, you know, on anyone's side, but he said after the fight, he said the fight was extremely close and he was the one that ref the fight, you know, so, but I would like to, you know, play that fight uh, live one of these days or on the show, I should say, one of these days. Let's go ahead and close out with um, Carl Frampton versus um, Scott Quigg. 
this is another good fight, another um, Al Heyman fight. Um, it's a really competitive fight. This is a fight that everyone in the U.K., they've been talking about this fight forever. A lot of, you know, real boxing fans, they've been wanting to watch this fight. Uh, Carl Frampton is more of the boxer. Scott Quigg is more of the aggressor. And, and they're undefeated. They're both undefeated. So, um, Eric Morales, um, what should you take on this fight? Great fight. It's a great fight. First of all, the U.K. fans should be treated to a nice little fight. I think Scott Quigg is going to start fast and early. I think he may even hurt Carl Frampton. But I think Frampton will find a way to win. He is an excellent boxer, and he seems to have great energy towards the end of the fight. Uh, it's, gonna, it's a real, real good fight, and if you can watch it, watch it. I know it comes on like at 2 in the afternoon for us, but it's real wonderful streaming. It'll, it'll probably be very entertaining to most boxing fans. Yes, it will be. Yes, it will be. I am, I am taking Frampton by a very close decision. Okay, okay. So me, me too. I'm, I'm picking Frampton. Boxing Ego, who you picking? Uh, it's a good fight, 50-50. I'm picking Frampton. I like his first fight in Texas when he was on PBC. He did that first fight in the States or whatever. Mm-hmm. That was a gamey dude, the Mexican guy. That Alejandro he Gonzalez like, Jr., coming. right? Mm-hmm. I think Gonzalez, it was. Yeah, Gonzalez was coming for him. And I like the adjustments that Carl Frampton made. So I think just even having a fight like that last, Kiko Martinez kind of got blazed by um, Frampton and Quigg. But in Quigg's last fight, it was, it was, pretty, it was pretty much an easy fight. But I like the, the learning lesson, how Frampton got knocked down, I think, twice in that fight and had to make some adjustments. So I'm, I'm rocking with Frampton. But Scott Quigg, he, he could pull the upset. He's big. He's real big. I didn't realize how big he was for the division. But I, I'm just with Frampton. I like the adjustments he made versus Gonzalez. Absolutely. I, I, I completely agree with everything you guys are saying. Uh, before I hit you, uh, Miss Boxing Baby, Jesse Feliciano, you familiar with Quig and um, Frampton? I'm going with the underdog. You going with the underdog? Oh, because he swing like you? <laughs> He's, he swing them haymakers? Yeah, I'm going with Quig. You going with Quig? Yeah, I'm going with Quig. Enrique? I'll take Quig also. Okay. Oh, you see, I, I see mm-hmm. how that works. You, you can't go <laughs> against your man go. over here. I see how that works. <laughs> Miss Boxing Baby, how's it going down? Um, it's a 50-50 pick and fight. I'm not really going. I'm kind of neutral on that one. Hoping for a good one, though. Okay, okay. That's what it is, man. Well, once again, man, I want to thank all you guys for joining the show in my in my studio, my man Jesse Feliciano. Thank you for having me. Yep, and my man er- Enrique, boxing Enrique. coach Enrique Vila, and Pops Jesse Feliciano over here. Anything else you guys want to say before we um, wrap up? Don't forget our website, www.lasvegasboxingacademy.com. Look us up. Jesse's part of the board. I'm the, I'm the president. My friend over here is the director, and my wife is the treasurer. So we're all family. We're all in it for to win it. Taking all donations. Yeah, <laughs> taking all donations. All donations. That's please. what it is. Thank you very oh. much. Okay, so we will see you guys next week for my panel, Miss Boxing Baby, Boxing Ego, Eric Morales, a.k.a. Counterpunch on YouTube, and my man Jesse Feliciano, the former welterweight champion in the building. We will see you guys next week. It's the nation, baby. Holla.